Hello, Mother. This is Half Mental, the show that's 90% baseball and the other half mental. I am the 2020 World Series Championship Dodgers. And I am Corey Seager. Nice. The man most responsible for it all. Oh, man. So I think. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. That, hey, it was a real team effort. Cheers. Cheers to my, my main man, Holt. What a great. What a great World Series. Yeah. It was really fun. It was, uh, you know, you get a lot of people coming out of the woodwork right now saying that it didn't count. It was a fake World Series, all that stuff. And I'm sure we'll talk about that. Um, but regardless of that talk, it really was a, uh, I thought it was a really great postseason, like all together. Yeah. I think there were a lot of fun series um your internet yeah. on struggle street oh bummer um huh. kind of catching up um but yeah i mean it, we've we've had this show uh to wrap up every series i'm, I'm tempted to start from the beginning but really we've done that so we can just start at the yeah. world series and i think we should mention right out of the gate that we both predicted the World Series correctly and the amount of games. Yeah, which is the first time we've gotten any prediction right in the history Ever. of this television <laughs> show. <laughs> I mean, I did have the Marlins bouncing the Cubs, I'll say. Yeah, 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 totally. Um, um, and it sort of went like we talked about, too. Like, the Rays were predictable in certain ways. Yeah, I didn't in my two game loss prediction for the Dodgers, I didn't necessarily have one of them being completely the Dodgers fault <laughs> on the last play of the game. <laughs> yeah. But that was also uh, Randy or Rosarena at it again. Yeah. No. And you then know? what's, what's important about that play is the Rays did everything right on that play yeah. and the Dodgers did so many things wrong <laughs> so um, we should i mean we should you should set it up a little bit I'll... well surely we sh we shan't start there okay we don't have to <laughs> okay <laughs> i was kind of i was halfway thought about saying why well, even talk about it but we should talk about it i mean it was it was, a, it, it was amazing um game one just kind of felt like the dodgers picked up where they left off uh it was also the game that I realized a couple things. Uh, I want to say first, too, is it's not unusual, and Dan knows this, for me to, like, sort of, in just my competitiveness, like, sort of starting, no matter what, just, like, not liking a team by the end of a series. Yeah. Or even that mm, that's a thing. Series. <laughs> um, right. I never felt that way with the Rays, ever. And I'd be interested to see if, like, I felt that way if they beat us or whatever. But I just, I never felt, I felt nothing but, like, respect for the Rays the whole time. Um, even the Braves, who I liked a lot going into our series, they, like, annoyed me towards the end. I was like, all right, it's a single, sit down. Yeah, you do get tired of people's shit pretty easily in the postseason. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> But then if Max Muncy hits a ball and just poses at the plate for an hour. Yeah, just there's plenty of room for that. Greatest thing ever. Um, so I don't know where I was going with that. But what I did realize in, the, in game one is that Tyler Glass now will be an ace, which I've always thought, except I maybe thought he was already 
there and he's not he's not um, uh he's super good super talented but he's doesn't have the repertoire of pitches that he needs like i feel i feel like he's like too predictable uh-huh. he uh i he don't know so hard <laughs> i don't remember seeing a catcher work as hard during a game as Mike Zunino did during Tyler Glasnow's starts. Start, yeah, especially, and, I mean, game one, it felt like he was all over the place. He did a pretty commendable job overall. He ended up with some wild pitches and fast balls. But I mean, just, I mean, he's hitting the dirt every time. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it crazy, I thought. Um, Zunino stood out to me. Um, in giving the Rays a little bit of, of of love, I mean, he played a really good catcher. Yeah. Um, with some some hard pitchers to do that with. Right. He certainly seemed like a wall behind the plate. And, and when, he, when he had a chance even, to throw off his arm, he did that. He didn't. I don't know that he actually threw anyone out. But right. It, so. The Dodgers kind of ran all over the Rays. Yeah. I don't know what – I mean, did you guys end up with like eight stolen bases or something like that? Sounds right. Um, so it's easy to say like, well, how does, how would you think Zanino had a good, good series? But it's sort of like I, – I actually thought of this. It's like in the NBA when like somebody has to guard Michael Jordan in the NBA finals, right? And if he puts up 35, that might be okay. <laughs> right. Like, that doesn't mean that person did a bad job. Yeah. Like, Zunino gave up however many stolen bases. But that's just because Mookie decided he was going to steal a bunch of bases, I think. Um, I don't remember being as excited about base running either at, since, like, the – Kansas City World Series runs of yeah. what was that like 2013? Was it that Maybe? long ago? Seven I think years. it was. Yeah, um, I think you're right. Because it was in between. No, they, because that'd be a Giants year, I think. It was, well, no, Giants were even years. Were they even? I thought they were odd. No, they were 10, 12, 14. Okay. Um, I just watched, I was going to bring this up later. I just watched this. Uh, compilation that MLB put together that would have included that World Series win, which was like the Dodgers past eight. It was kind of nice. Oh, seasons. Like, yeah, the Dodgers past eight final outs of the postseason for the eight years. I explained that horribly. Oh, interesting. So you saw all these like losses and then oh boy, Julio. Um, but yeah, I agree. I thought Zanino was impressive. I mean, he didn't actually do anything at the plate. I think he had a base hit right. maybe in game six yeah that's true um i th- uh i thought oh i also figured out that cody bellinger like owns tyler glass now i didn't know that until the in game one but he after his home run in game one he's now three well not anymore because he pitched again but at the time he was three for four against glass now with three home runs <laughs> Yeah. Which is kind of crazy. Did you um, did you see Bellinger with uh Jimmy Kimmel? Not yet. I've been saving it. I'm gonna watch it tonight. But I I mean I heard what he said about being high, which was hilarious. So he was like, I don't smoke pot during games. Yeah, he's like, I'm not high during the game. <laughs> oh yeah, he said I'm not high during the game. Uh, it reminded me of like the meme like my I'm not high during the game sure has a lot of people asking questions already answered by my t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, game one just kind of felt like the Dodgers picked up where they left off. Game two was Blake Snell, and I promised myself I wouldn't freak out. But then game two was a like a bullpen game for the Dodgers versus Blake Snell. And so I like told myself before game two, like if we win it, we put ourselves in an incredible position, but it's not, it shouldn't be our game. 
Yeah, and that's the game. Like Brandon Lau came out of nowhere and hit yeah, two home runs, two home runs. the race second baseman. He ended up with he had another one in the series, so he ended up with three. All um, opposite. There was some crazy stat about how he hadn't hit an opposite field in like a couple of years, opposite field home run oh. in a couple of years or something, and he had all three of his home or all four of his home runs in the postseason were opposite field, which is kind of crazy. Interesting. Um, but the Dodgers sort of like put runs up on their bullpen in that game. Um, and Corey Seager hit a home run. It just like kind of looked like we were doing what we'd done yeah. all postseason. I was like, oh my God, what if we win this? And then we lost it. And I got real, real sad. Um, but then I was like, you told yourself it would be okay. Yeah. Um, then Walker Bueller comes out for game three and is just Walker Bueller, which is becoming something that like Dodgers fans and maybe baseball fans in general are getting used to like that kid loves the moment he is a big game pitcher and it's unreal what he does in big games yeah um 10 strikeouts um yeah I just I loved seeing I mean I did I love seeing the pitching in this series yeah, and that that um, one. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm leaving out Ray stats or, or stuff, but that was Charlie Morton. So it was yeah. no like easy game for us, um, but we knocked out Charlie Morton pretty quick. Um, yeah, so I've got it up. I mean, he gave up five runs in four and a third, um, but I mean, to me, like this so much of watching the games it was like like all the time it was like man these pitchers are amazing and then sure enough the Dodgers would end up scoring five runs in the first four innings somehow you know like yeah. <laughs> um I don't know I was like I don't know how you watch baseball and decide that like it's the hitter's fault that everyone's striking out so much um I can find a way these pitchers are <laughs> unbelievable I know I know. I don't know how anyone hits a, a major league baseball pitcher. <laughs> um, so that brings us to game four, which was probably <laughs> pains me to say this, but probably the best game of the series. I mean, it, it was absolutely the best. Yeah. It I mean, was full of lead changes. There was scoring at like almost every half inning. It was a wild ride and it, I mean, let's just get straight to it. It ended on what likely will be for a very long time the craziest play in a, to end a World Series game, I would I would think. I, don't, I guess I don't know that for sure. Yeah, I think that's probably fair. I think the Dodgers locked that down. <laughs> um, it was, yeah, it was wild. Um, so you want to walk if, us through the play? Yeah, if, if you're watching this show, I'm sure you've seen it a thousand times. Um, but essentially, a Rosarina was on first, and I honestly can't think of who would have been on second. Uh, uh Kiermeyer, yes, that's exactly right. Okay, so a couple interesting things about this inning we brought Kenley Jansen in, he got a, a strikeout, he then gave up a hit to Karemeyer, a broken bat hit that had the lowest exit velocity of any hit in the playoffs. Really? Yeah, 63 miles an hour off the bat. Um, the, any ball that was a hit, does that make sense? Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm sure there were like rollers up, up to the pitcher's mound that were less. So that's Karemeyer. We got Karemeyer on first. Then he records the next out pretty quickly. So two outs, he gets two strikes on a Rosarina and starts trying to get pretty and perfect. Um, and he loses him, walks him. So one strike away for a few pitches there. Yeah. I honestly think it might've been Oh, two on a Rosarina. It was bad. Um, then he throws Rosarina fights off one or two and, eventually walks him brings up uh brandon phillips 
Brett Phillips. Brett Phillips, sorry. <laughs> the literal last man on the Tampa Bay bench. Right. And no and the, position players left, I think. The funny thing is when we were pitching to a Rosarina, I was like, what are we doing? Just like bring Brett up Phillips is right there. Brett Phillips. And, you know, in hindsight, that didn't work, but also maybe it would have if Kinley didn't have to throw eight pitches to a Rosarina. I don't know, though, because Brett Phillips goes down 0-2. 0-2 count. We are one strike away again. Again, yeah. And then Brett Phillips hits like a 68-mile-an-hour ball off the bat, like the second lowest. Yeah. Like, I feel bad for Kinley. Like, the world – once I'm dead, <laughs> like, I mean, I just feel like that shit was, I mean, yes, he was on the mound for it, but so let's but that keep one wasn't his fault. <laughs> yeah. Right? So let's keep going. It is a routine, slow hit single to center field. Yeah. Obviously the stakes are higher than any sporting event. I most likely will ever play it. That's a joke. It most likely. Definitely. <laughs> um, so I have no idea what nerves would be like. I would probably piss and shit my pants before I even got to the ball. So so did Chris Taylor. <laughs> because so Chris, Chris Taylor did it as he got to the ball. Uh, it like Chris Taylor only playing center because Cody Bellinger was having like back spasms or back something. Back spasms, which I, I'm so curious if it was actually his shoulder, but um Cody Bellinger was not in center. That's a huge part of this. Yeah. Um, Chris Taylor clearly kind of started to make the play before the ball was in his glove. Yeah. You got to watch the ball in your glove, Chris. Yeah, goes for like a quick transfer and the ball's gone and it shoots to his left. He recovers quickly, uh, but Randy Rosarina is – running like a freight train you know he's just f flying around the bases and i think he recognizes pretty quickly you know tying runs in oh my god i booted it the winning run is coming in yeah he throws into max muncie which i've heard a few people say that was a bad throw i don't agree with that maybe it maybe it took muncie a little bit to his right but i mean Hitting the cutoff man there is fine, is a great play. It was a – wasn't it a short throw home to hit a cutoff man? That was my – or was it not? Um, yeah, I mean, it was pretty short. But, like, I'd much rather see an outfielder hit your cut. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. he had time. Yeah. Um, I'd much rather see the cutoff man get hit than, like, overthrow the catcher, you know, three hop yeah. it to the catcher's right or left. Um and then Muncie turns, and you can kind of see the moment that Muncie realizes that now a Rosarina is on the ground. He has tripped up. He's fallen down. He's on the oh ground. Oh, my God. I forgot he tripped. Jeez. Yeah. So the Dodgers, <laughs> at one point, the Dodgers are thinking, we got to get the ball in as quickly as humanly possible. To get him in a rundown. Yeah. Yeah. I've thought about this a lot. What Muncie should have done, and I'm not blaming it on Muncie. There are so many people to blame on this play. We'll get to that here in a minute. Muncie should have ran, like, run, run out. out of Rosarina. Yeah. Um, but instead, you kind of see, like, Muncie's in this big hurry, and then you almost, like, as if he, and I'm sure he did, but the only camera angle I can get is behind Muncie. It's like he sees him, and so he's going like real quick and kind of slows down to throw a, a more accurate throw. He probably would have been better off just staying at that same speed because mm -hmm. it throws a little bit to Will Smith's right. So Will Smith is facing the right side of the field. He has no idea a Rosarina's on the ground. So you hear a lot of people like blaming. I, I felt like I heard the most people blaming Will Smith because the throw is not terrible. The throw is absolutely catchable. It deflected off his glove. Right. But once again, what Will Smith did was he got caught up 
and what was about to happen. And so he yeah, goes he for thought this Rose huge, was coming in. Exactly. He goes for this huge swipe tag to hopefully get a Rosarino who's probably going to do some amazing, you know, hook slide. And he goes to swipe and the ball's not in his glove. And a Rosarino essentially crawls to home plate <laughs> and starts slapping it. And the Rays won the game. It was in real time. I was so devastated <laughs> that the ball fell that I never even saw Chris Taylor boot it. I just looked, my wife was just going, he missed it. Oh, he missed it. Like I was like out of the room. I was like, Fuck. Holt, keep hold. You should. <laughs> yeah. It's going only going to get worse. You think the game's tied right now. And I came back oh, in and Rosarina's like slapping home plate. And I was like, what? Like, I didn't even see it happen. I had to see the replays. Um, Another funny thing is, and I don't know how much of a difference it would have made, but Kinley should have been backing up this. Yeah. I think that was floating. I don't know how big of a difference that makes, but that's bad. He was just just sort of like hangs out. Yeah. He just watched, like became a total spectator. Um, Um, And that's, that's a bummer. Like he said it, it wouldn't have mattered. You know, like who cares? It's over. I think those are all things you have to do in a series like this. Honestly, I really do. But that's just like, I expect my 22 month old to back up home plate on a plate like that. Like that, I mean, that is just yeah. fundamental. Yeah, it's bad. And sure, he thought that the ball wouldn't even come home because it was a base hit and one run would score. And, but yeah. you can't assume that ever. And I, I don't, agree. his positioning probably wouldn't have made. It clo- you know what I mean? Like it probably wouldn't would have, have been interesting it. to find out though. Exactly. <laughs> you sure hate to just see him. Like he just, <laughs> I just feel kind of bad for him because he's just kind of standing there like watching everything. And he's just like, Oh, Oh, Oh no. Um, the ball actually def- like deflected off the home plate umpire and, and it like misdirected. I don't know if that's the right way to say that. Oh, I don't know that I realized that. So it, I don't think Kenley would have, been there but it's more of the principle of the matter um yeah so you've got chris taylor charged with an error on that i found out the next day that they initially did not charge will smith with an error they went yeah they retroactively which i think is fine i thought it was a two error play the whole time um uh yeah yeah. somebody has to own the error on the throw home um and it's up to the catcher you guys know how much I love the Dodgers and this specific Dodgers team is, it's gotta be my favorite. And we play really clean baseball. I remember one game against the Padres, the game that Trent Grisham hit that home run, the Dodgers had a crazy meltdown and it was like the inning after Grisham hit the home run. And I swear we committed like two or three errors in that inning. Otherwise like very clean defensive team all year long. So yeah. just to see that it was to- and it was really hard not to feel like is this going to define this world series like the the yeah. Braves series felt like it was defined by stellar defensive moments by the Los Angeles Dodgers and some really yeah. time timely hitting but um the Dodgers started That's- making incredible defensive plays and so I just was horrified then all of a sudden, this yeah, miscue was going to cause the collapse of what looked like a, a series we could totally handle. But then realized pretty quickly it's Kershaw coming out. And believe it or not, everybody, I still have so much faith in that guy. Um, so here's the funny thing out. about Kershaw. There... I am prepared to make the argument that Clayton Kershaw is the greatest postseason pitcher of all time. Holt. Yeah. Well, would you like to sit next to me? Because I've been saying that for fucking ever. <laughs> Pardon my language. He, he has more great games pitched in the postseason than any other pitcher in history. He has, he's struck out more people in the postseason than any pitcher in history. Yeah, I, I honestly. I'm feel, just so uninterested in 
in in in his narrative at all. I know. I feel like we can finally like just not it's just not talk about it. Um, I mean, I know we're talking about it right now, but yeah. like in the past years, I've felt like it's been so unfair and like it's just something to talk about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like when you go to ESPN, they're like Michael Jordan's dog farted on one of his cigars yesterday. And you're like, what? Like, that's what it felt like to me. It's like Clayton Kershaw can't pitch in the postseason. It's like, wait, Jordan you're... would never stand for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, you're ignoring everything. You're ignoring his entire body of work and you're taking out like four games. Yeah. And oh, by the way, one of those games, people knew what was coming and that changes ERA by like 3.75. Like, um, not fair. It's bullshit. So, <laughs> Don't you and I haven't right. talked about uh, Buck went in on the Astros. I, I enjoyed was that, that moment. <laughs> was that the first game Kershaw pitched? I think it was. Yeah, it was game one. Um, he, he had the exact quote of Clayton Kershaw is a victim of that cheating. Yeah. Which I, I don't think I've really heard anyone say that. Yeah. Um, I thought it was really cool by buck i agree i think it's obvious that he i mean he had a obviously has a personal view of the impact of that and what it means for the game and he took he like carved out his time to uh make it very explicit which on a national stage like that was pretty cool i know and and like how often do you find yourself being like Joe Buck did something pretty cool. Um, <laughs> new background, who this? <laughs> Yo, trying to find mine. Yeah, does that? Oh, that's a good one. Okay, cool. <laughs> I think you need to scoot over like a little bit. We're there you go. There he is. Yeah. There he is. So proud of you. So proud of you. Um, um, it was cool. Um, man. And I, we've talked about this before, but Smoltz is just the worst, though. I think they got it. Since, since we gave Buck a minute, I mean, I think they've got why? To do something about it. Why do they allow? I mean, I don't understand it at all. I've also, I would like to take this off the air, I think, but I've also heard <laughs> some crazy stuff about John Smoltz and the things he said. Oh, well, that, cool. That Maybe we should. Me, yeah, that makes me think like, how, why? would you even employ this guy right um right he now kept, <laughs> he kept hating on jock peterson which i personally found infuriating i i felt like they were loving on him towards the end of the series well no so it would be like oh he only does it in october the framing was like if only he could focus in the regular season like he yeah. does jock peterson was an all-star last year right yeah, and put on... He was an all-star. <laughs> and put on an incredible show in the Home Run Derby. Not that that... Yeah, but, I mean, he's one of the... Like, I think it was last year where he had, like, more home runs than any other type of hit for a while. Yeah. Which is a, an amazing stat. It's like the Joey Gallo stat. Um, I don't know. Like, okay, Jock Peterson is not a perfect baseball player. He, you know, yeah, but but you don't have to like frame it like that. Um, and he did it in two or three different game scenarios. Yeah, um, it really bothered me for a guy like Jock who is a successful baseball player, <laughs> like right. Um, and who it, has just been so big in October too. I know that's yeah. like part of the part of this, but um. And like, I don't know. Uh, more let's let's circle back to John Smoltz because it's gonna it'll come back to him. Um, somehow we've made it to Game Five without really talking about Mookie Betts, who is just uh, very yeah. clearly the catalyst of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Like, in this yeah, man weird half a season has just like really proved that he's somehow worth every penny of the absurd contract that he signed. 
um and game one he stole i mean he stole he got the world free tacos like right i mean not the world but um maybe uh he got (laughs) there's taco bells everywhere i'm sure uh free tacos like right away like stolen base i think in the first inning um no it wasn't the first inning but it was it was quick um he ended up when he stole second and then third two different times yeah in that game he had a he had a game i do you remember this dan he had his line that game was the second time anyone had ever accomplished that in world series history and to babe ruth it was like two stolen bases and a home run in the same world series game or something yeah it was something like that um so when he hit that home run in game one um once again my poor wife i was just like man if mookie like because mook we we advanced in the nlcs without mookie hitting he wasn't hitting at all in the nlcs um but his defense was insane he was like able to like fire yeah. up with his defense. But once he hit the home run in game one, I was like, if he's hitting like this, like I can't imagine us not being able to pull this off. And he- well, and he managed to be, I mean, he did not hit as well as Corey Seager right. or Justin Turner, or maybe even Max Muncie. No, nope. but he was certainly as impactful. Yes. As, probably all of those guys. I mean, Seager won the MVP and there's no arguing that necessarily. Yeah. Um, but they could have given it to Mookie and I don't know if anybody would have <laughs> complained about it. Yeah. I think Mookie could have gotten it. Um, what's weird is this isn't, wasn't just like a, a fantasy. Cause for a second I was like, wait, Kershaw just won game two, like his second game, like Kershaw might be in line for this, especially if it only goes six. And then I saw a stat that said something like the last two pitchers who have done a similar thing to Clayton Kershaw. So it was like two wins in the World Series while striking out a third of the batters they faced. Yeah. Won Um, the MVP. Won the MVP. And I was like, holy shit, he might have a chance. But obviously totally fine with Corey Seager getting it. Um, uh, Yeah, but I mean, Mookie's just incredible. I, I can't believe that i get to watch him play baseball for the next 12 years like i really can't believe it yeah um it's it's a very cool thing uh not on my cigar but my dog just farted (laughs) (laughs) uh okay so game that brings us to game five which was another kershaw start um he it was an awesome Kershaw start because he did not have his his greatest stuff by any stretch of the imagination and he just kind of battled through it and um he best best part of this game was he got himself into some serious trouble maybe in the fourth inning and it was like first and third I want to say it was first and third with no outs it was a scary situation and um, I think he striked out like Adamas or something and got like a shallow fly ball, I think maybe. And then Kermeyer came up and um, Diaz tried to steal home and he Margo tried to steal home. Yeah. Oh, Margo. Thank you. Yeah. Um, And Mark, got caught stealing oh (laughs) nice um and it was just an awesome play i mean given the stakes and the circumstances and the stage and all that to be able to remember that you have to step off the mound to throw home and then to throw a strike home like it was a super smart play by Margot, in my opinion yeah i agree and it was a almost perfectly executed play by Clayton Kershaw and and one that I don't know how many pitchers in the league actually make that play and I know that's a big thing to say but yeah but he talked about like Muncie called him off the mound yep and he talked about like keeping Muncie aware of that because somebody had tried to steal home on him years ago yeah go okay he knew exactly who it was that's one of the things I love about these pro athletes they're like 
Uh, yeah, in my 14th start in 2013, Carlos yeah. Gomez did that to me. Yeah. Um, and I think it's great. I mean, it's the same mindset that allowed Mookie and Seeger to double steal a couple times and that got Arroz Arena home in game two. It's just like, make the other guys make the mistakes. Right. And like Kershaw did not make the mistake there, right? Yeah. So um, Margot got caught, but um, I, I mean, it's great. Just make stuff happen. Kevin, I don't know if you had a chance to hear Kevin Cash's explanation of that. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think I did. It was awesome. I, I really like Kevin Cash, and the poor guy is going to get roasted all off season. But um, he was just like, I have an incredible group of athletes and I encourage them to make athletic plays. He's like, so that play was elected by Margo and he made that decision and I will support it 10 yeah. times out of 10. He's like, they, he's an incredible athlete. He, I know he can see things that I can't see. And he was like, I, I want them to, to feel like they can make that decision. And I, you know, I thought it was great. And it was a few inches away from, from going our way yeah uh, i mean if he got uh, one more step if cool Seager thing to gave, say <laughs> or if uh kershaw gave him like one more pump before right. he threw home i mean so many things um yeah um so that was a i mean a great game Kers what was cool about that game i thought um and actually we'll we'll segue into game six pretty well is kershaw came out for the sixth and the plan was with him and Dave Roberts that he would, he'd get the first two batters and then we'd, we'd go to Dustin May. And Kershaw comes out and throws two pitches and gets two outs. And Dave Roberts comes flying out of the dugout and you see Justin Turner and Corey Seager like lobbying. They're like, don't take him out, don't take him out. And for once Kershaw sort of gives up the ball quickly and without yeah. because that was their plan and you know all that um but yeah two pitches on two outs to see a guy leave after that is is tough but i didn't realize i i remember that turner was lobbying for him to stay in i didn't catch that that was the exact context and clayton crazy. after he gets the second out on the second pitch of the inning he kind of looks in at dave roberts and smiles like are we gonna I, yeah i'm sure <laughs> um but, you know, it worked out. Dustin May looked the best he had since maybe the NLCS. I mean, no, I'm sorry, the uh, NL Division Series. Um, and we got out of that game. An awesome win for Clayton Kershaw, who I think is just really cementing himself as one of the greatest pitchers of all time. Yeah. Um, like top five if you want I, i'd go less than that um five five seemed <laughs> <laughs> um that brings us to game six uh i feel like i'm talking a lot but i'm just just getting so excited talking about this yeah no it's good i don't have to consistently redirect you from talking about the dodgers so it, yeah. it works out pretty well yeah i guess that's true um game six was going to be another sort of like it was going to be a Tony Gonsolin start and Tony Gonsolin which was, has not worked I know ever really great in the regular I know and it's it's hard it's one of those things it's just like ugh, what what's the deal he is a rookie so maybe he can flip the script um but you want a narrative yeah. if you want a narrative there's your narrative tony gonsolin sucks in the postseason okay did he have four bad starts in the playoffs i think he did right i think he had four starts and like four they were all bad innings <laughs> like yeah it was it was crazy um and this is a guy that would come out and throw like six innings of no hit ball you know what I mean? not no hit but like six innings of shutout baseball to like the colorado rockies in coors field yeah, yeah. It just no, didn't I mean, like make Johnson's sense. Got it. It's just yeah. Um, but he he had a horrific first inning, which really ended up being uh not, you know, he he limited the damage, but he gave up a bomb to Rosarina, 
which at that point I sent you a text. I was like, why are we pitching to him? Like, I know it's the first inning, but just yeah, like, sort of why I don't get he it. He had a slider a foot off the plate to the opposite field. Yeah. It was like 390 feet or something. Yeah. Uh, so they went up one, nothing. And then he like walked two people. I mean, there was like a lot of traffic that inning and yeah, really it lucky was, to, it was a super scary inning. Really lucky to get out of that one, nothing. Um, and at that point I really was, I know it's so easy to say on the show, like three days later or whatever, but on our super popular show. Um, but I was like, at, we just have to like keep it close and we have a chance like knock Blake Snell out and we have a chance in this game, but our, but this bullpen approach, we have to keep it like they can't get more than three runs. That was my number. Um, and Tony, the cat Gonsolin comes back out, gets two outs, gets into more trouble, more traffic. And we brought in Dylan Floro to face a Rosarina who's already back up again. Keep in mind, it's just a second inning. <laughs> um, That's the trouble with all the traffic on the bases. And Floro throws three pitches to Rosarina and strikes him out. And that, and at that moment, <laughs> I was like, yes, let's go get him. Like we've somehow like avoided chaos twice, you know, like second inning is our inning. And then Blake Snell, what I for, failed to mention about the bottom of the first is that Blake Snell just looked like a monster. Like Blake Snell looked kind of unlike any pit, like he just looked like he had it. Like, yeah, I mean, he struck uh, out the yeah. side in the first and no one was close. Like, and it was on 12 pitches. It was easy. And then uh, comes back out. I think he gets two or three, like of the next, you know, he's just making guys look like they're missing by a lot. And yeah, the strikeout stuff he had, the swing and miss stuff he had that day was unbelievable. Yeah. And uh, then somehow that story, I mean, that story for Blake Snell doesn't change until we get to the sixth. And we'll talk more about that. But somehow the Dodgers bullpen, not somehow, the Dodgers bullpen has been good. But the Dodgers bullpen all of a sudden is getting swing and misses like crazy too. They're striking everyone out. And it's starting to feel like, all right, my, where I was at, I was like, okay, my game plan can still work if Blake Snell can, can get somehow out get, like become less efficient. Cause it was like the fourth or the fourth or fifth inning and he'd thrown like 48 pitches. Yeah. So the concern think, for me was like, are we going to be able to knock him out period? And I know that, that I knew that he'd have a super short leash just because that's how Kevin Cash manages first off. And especially with, with Blake, unfortunately, um, cause he's has this weird thing where his ERA goes up after the sixth or after the fifth or something like that. Sorry, I keep cutting you off. No, I was just saying like, I think the, um, the sort of unexpected hero out of the Dodger bullpen was Alex Wood. That night? Yeah. 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 I mean, he was awesome. If you expected two scoreless innings out of Alex Wood in a totally clinching agree. game, I, uh, you'd have been the only one who did that, I think. You know, totally agree. He ate up some um, innings for us in the, against the Astros in the 2017 World Series. But since then, he's been not great. It was a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, it was just a super close game. But it, it still felt like it was an interesting game because it felt like the advantage was definitely with the Rays, with the way Blake Snell was pitching. But the, the deeper we got into the game, so like fifth, sixth inning, um, with the Dodgers bullpen going the way it was, it was like just one tiny little thing and the momentum's going to come like flying to the Dodgers side. It's just because yeah. you've got your bullpen guys like pitching their hearts out. Um, and, and sure enough, uh, World Series hero Austin Barnes comes up with one out in the sixth inning. Yeah. And uh, gets a single up the middle. And 
Kevin Cash comes flying out of the dugout. And it was a weird feeling because I had been like prepared for a quick hook for Blake Snell. But at this point, he's at 73 pitches. Yep. And he just looks so good. Like, right. Uh, and I mean, you just immediately like that felt bigger than a home run at that point. It felt like, yeah, here we go. This is, this is our I mean, game the, to lose. But the takeaway is that like managers shouldn't make moves that energize the other team. Yeah. Right. Like, like that happened to the Dodgers were like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's out. We might be able and to that, hit the ball. <laughs> um, two hits. And he yeah. Given up two hits too, right? We didn't mention right. that. Nine and strikeouts. I mean, you, <laughs> you can talk about all the, you know, innings limits he's had and the three times through the order and all that. But like, I mean, it, you got to find the time to let your star players perform like star players right yeah and that means that at least snell gets out of that inning so um the biggest head scratcher for me on that call it i kevin cash is in such an impossible situation there because he is doing the thing he's done all year long to get them to this point yeah which is hand the ball to the bullpen get the starter out the first sign of you know stress whatever that's his formula. Um, I mean, you saw in the ALCS, Snell was pissed. Yeah. Taken from that game. Um, so if Kevin Cash doesn't make a move there and the Dodgers were to get a few hits off of Snell, win the game, then he looks like an idiot because he doesn't do what he always do- has done. But then he yeah. does it and he looks like a huge idiot. My, the biggest thing – I want to talk about real quick. I'm sure we're actually getting close on time, but um, I feel like a boatload of analytics <laughs> went into the decision to pull Blake Snell. And I feel like no sort of evaluation at all went into the pitcher that was put into the game. Bringing in Nick Anderson, who has been yeah. terrible. Giving up run in his runs in his last like six appearances. Like yeah. uh, he's a right hander and Mookie Betts doesn't hit left handers. Like it was a right. weird call. Yeah. So that was in particular was the wrong call was yeah. bringing in Nick Anderson. Um, yeah. And for anyone that didn't see it, I'm sure again, I'm sure you all have the Dodgers quickly piled on a couple runs and, and it just, yeah, it felt like the game was over. From yeah, like I mean, Nick Anderson language. giving up that run was like su- super predictable. Yeah. And it wasn't just like Mookie hit a double that got Austin Barnes to third. So it was second and third, but it wasn't even another hit that did it. Uh, Anderson threw a wild pitch that brought home Austin Barnes. And then Corey Seager grounded out to first and Mookie Betts is a, like the best player in baseball at reading a ground ball apparently because he beats oh him. yeah that's when he went yeah the infield was shifted in if you're gonna play infield in on Mookie Betts apparently you got to be like five feet in front of the plate if you want to get him out yeah there's there's no such thing as infield in. like you <laughs> might as well not play it yeah just get the out um yeah, and then Mookie hit a home run in the top of the ninth, and Julio Urias did what he has done all postseason, just completely shut everything down. And Yeah, I was pleased to see Urias get the ninth inning. I was concerned <laughs> about the decision there, but that's how you guys clinched the NLCS too. And I think that's a great point for what we were just talking about, and maybe maybe – a sign of Dave Roberts growth as a major league manager, because I don't think he would have done that two years ago. I don't think he would have done that three years ago. I think Um, he was writing, like he was trusting his gut and his eyes and he was ignoring the fact that maybe he should bring Trinan in or, or Jansen, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, pretty easy to ignore the Jansen thing, but 
I mean, sort of. Um, I'd be so interested to think about like the value of Urias doing something like that, like three times a week, all season long, versus being like a fourth starter. Yeah. Because I don't know that he has shown the stuff to be as great a starter as we thought he might be. Right. But he's really good <laughs> at the, those two to three key innings. Yeah. Um, and what a valuable I know that would be. Um, if he could pull together like a hundred innings like that every year, that'd be pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Just like so happy. It's so funny. Like, <laughs> of course I was like thrilled and it meant the world to me and I cried and drank champagne and it was amazing, but like, I'm just so happy for Dave Roberts and Clay. I mean, the amount of happiness in my, like, <laughs> I carry around less tension in my body now <laughs> that Clayton Kershaw won a World Series. So Clayton Kershaw, I'm sure you've seen this number, but for our loyal viewers out there, Clayton Kershaw and Kenley Jansen were one and two on most postseason series played before winning their first World Series. Dang. Kershaw appeared in 19 series before winning a World Series. Uh, Jansen has appeared in, or did appear in 16. Um, that that's pretty wild. <laughs> yeah. That's nightmare fuel for that guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Super great. Um, I want to mention, I think I've talked about him after every other series uh postseason round two but um brewstar gratterall is such a cool uh secondary piece to get from boston i know i mean i, know. I feel like that trade was so good like i feel like the mookie bets trade from boston like does that put them in another like 110 year draft yeah probably i think like so. I think you could argue that you could have made the trade for just Gratterall and it might have been an okay trade. <laughs> but instead, you also got the second best player in baseball. Yeah. Um, it's wild. Yeah. And boy, did he prove it this postseason. It's just like, oh, yeah, you are, you're the best. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I still think, you know, Mike Trout probably holds that title but Mookie is right there I mean he's in the conversation which is yeah great yeah the best you can do with Mike Trout is force a conversation right <laughs> yeah yeah um let's get that guy in the playoffs Jeez, I know how many teams do they need to allow in the playoffs <laughs> to, to make it so the Angels make it um, um well so, hey so we've talked for almost an hour yeah and we so much has happened since the final out of the World Series was recorded. Yeah. But I think that I don't know how to do it, but I think we got to spend some time on it at some point. Yeah. Um, so we've got two options. We could, we if you want to, we could jam in right now or we could just have a show next week. Yeah, let's do a show next week on uh, on every moment from the last out of the world series yeah sorry about that i got so no 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 no. i think it's good but um within like 24 hours of the world series ending it was like oh my god so much has happened already yeah and now this is the second day since then um so yeah i think we should do another episode soon and then we will probably enter a little bit of off season hibernation maybe I don't know. major league baseball announced they will not be holding their winter meetings in person yep um that's just one of the things that has happened guys man you know what i just thought of what if we started a show called trust your gut or trust analytics and we 
and we make up scenarios. So it's like Blake Snell. So it's like, okay, hypothetical former Cy Young winner. Right, exactly. And you know, I got to go with my gut, leave him in. <laughs> um, and then it's simulated on MLB The Show on PlayStation. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's how you find out. Um, all right, well, it's safe to say that this has been the best year of baseball and that, oh gosh, we didn't even talk about Oh, wow. You're right. So much has happened since the final out of the World Series. Yes. <sighs> um, okay. Well, I too am happy for Dave Roberts and Clayton Kershaw and Corey Seager and all those guys. But I'm most happy for you, Holt. Oh, thanks, Dan. It was great, man. I can't, I don't really even know how to process it still. Like, I mean, yeah. I, just, just live with it. It's great. Yeah. Just enjoy yourself. I know it wasn't like just for me, um, <laughs> but nobody can prove that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I heard from some people that I haven't heard from in like years and years yeah. that were just like, thought about you tonight, man. Um, it's great. Uh, I was going to say one more thing that was basically just like, Clayton Kershaw won the World Series. It's so awesome. Um, I really just can't believe it. I'm going to close out with this. Yeah. Um, no, I feel like there's one more quick thing I was going to say, but oh. It's so cool too. One last thing that the Dodgers, I say, say this all the time, at least a couple times a year is the truth um, that the Dodgers are the drillers. The drillers are the Dodgers farm team because I have a photo with Corey Seager and I have Corey Seager's yeah. autograph on a baseball and I have Julio Urias's autograph on a baseball. And those guys are like the stars of the postseason. Yeah, it's awesome. Cool stuff. Pretty, baseball. Pretty hard to beat. Baseball never ceases to amaze me. Baseball fever. Catch it. Oh, good one. Hey. <laughs> um, all right, guys. We'll see you next week for our first and possibly only off-season show. <laughs> Go Dodgers. Clayton Kershaw won the World Series. <laughs> Thank you.